Okay, so 4.7 is going to tie in closely to what we did back in 4.4. .4. So I want to go back to 4.4 .4 and do a little recap um, before we start diving into a change of basis in uh, 4.7. So what we did in 4.4 .4 is we defined what a basis was. Um, and the basis was that we've been using um, to create all of our coordinates and all of our points up until now is the standard basis. And we're going to focus on R2 today just to keep it simple. So we were asking ourselves, the coordinates that we've been using our whole life are the coefficients of the basis vectors we would need to get to that location. We would need to add together to get to that location. So I would need to add 6 of the vector 1, 0, and 5 of the vector 0, 1 to get to the location, this location here, marked 6, 5. That's how we labeled it. But what we talked about in 4.4 .4 was what if I wanted to get to the exact same location, okay, this point here, but I was using different movements. So I was thinking about this, another metaphor for you, I know you like those, don't tell me if you don't, that's fine, uh, <laughs> I'm going to keep making metaphors. Um, but I was thinking about our friends who are in robotics, and what if um, we were a robot starting at the origin, and we needed to get to a certain point, okay, we needed to demonstrate that we could get there, but we only have two commands for our robot, okay, well how many times would you have to give the command to go to the right, how many times do you have to give the command to go up, um, in order to make it to that point, so I'd have to give six right commands and five up commands here. But if I was had different commands, maybe I have one command that says go right three up one and another one that still just says go up one, okay? I only have to give two of the first command, okay? And then three of the last command. And let's map this, okay? Let's take that and put it on top of this system over here. So if I am doing, let's do the commands for B1 first. So that means I would multiply two times B1. So that means I would go right three and up one right, three, and up one, twice, okay? Then I do three commands of zero, one. So that means go up one, three times. One, two, three. We end up at the same location, okay? And our idea today is also that, remember that this basis, neither of these bases are exclusive. The only thing we need to do to have a basis for a whole vector space or a dimension like this is we need to have a set of linearly independent vectors that spans the whole vector space. Since we're only going to be dealing with uh, dimensions like R2 and R3, I think we're actually just going to stick to R2 today, um, that means that since it has to span the entire dimension, there needs to be a pivot in every row, and since they need to be linearly independent columns, or linearly independent vectors, there needs to be a pivot in every column. So everything that we're going to have today, our bases are going to be uh, going to end up making square matrices, which is important. But remember that these bases are not unique. So I had another basis down here, which was 6005, which would be kind of the easiest, like, I think, commands to give if we were piloting a robot. would just be like, okay, do one command, go right six, do a second command, go up five. Okay, that gets me to the same location that we're all talking about. Okay, so again, you can either think about it, I think my last metaphor was about building blocks, about using Legos to build the same uh, structure, um, whether you use one by one Legos or Legos that are a little bit longer or um, even longer here. Um, regardless, we're all getting to the same location, and that's what's most important. Okay, that location though could be interpreted as in different coordinate systems. So the coefficients, aka the number of times we use this block or this block, or the number of times we use this command and this command, those coefficients ended up being our coordinate in this system. Okay, where each unit here was one of these basis vectors. Each unit here was a basis vector, the length or, or the direction of one basis vector. So that's what we did in 4.4. .4. What we also did was in 4.4 .4 was everything we changed back into the standard basis. So if I wanted to go from a basis that I knew uh, to another basis, in 4.4 .4 I needed to go back to the standard basis and then over here, which is inefficient. Maybe I want to communicate directly, give directions in between these two systems over here. I don't want to have to rely on the standard basis all the time. So 4.7 is going to be us going from one basis to another basis with, without using the standard basis. Okay, so more of you. Okay, so let's have two bases. And I'm going to say from 4.4, .4, I'm going to use 
the coordinate in the standard basis like we just did, let x equal 6, 5. Okay, so we're going to make one basis. We're going to make it c. Okay, the basis c will be two vectors, 3, 2, and oops. I think I also did that on the field notes. I forgot to make it two vectors. I made it like a weird matrix, so make sure you fix that. 0, 1. Okay. So, real quick, to review, what would the coordinate of x be with respect to basis c? Okay, well, if I'm going to use these two vectors to create 6, I need to multiply the first vector times 2. Okay, that's going to give me 4. Then I just need to multiply this by 1. Okay, so multiplying the first vector by 2 and the second vector by 1 will give me the coordinate 6, 5. So the coordinates of x with respect to basis c are 2, 1. But let's say we have a different basis. I'm going to say basis d. Okay, and that's going to be 4, 5 and 1, 0. Okay, so what will the coordinates of x be with respect to basis d? Okay, well, I can see that if I... Let's see, let's see. I Well, I'll start at the bottom this time. Since I know this one is 5 and this one is 0, I know that the first vector must be multiplied by 1. But in order to get 6, that means the second vector must be multiplied by 2. Okay, so these are the coordinates of x in the basis d, with respect to basis d. So if we're interested, though, in going, instead of going back to the standard basis and then going to d, so you see how I had to find I had to, I kept referencing the vector 6, 5. Um, what if I want to just go from one to the other one? Okay, and so we need to figure out, in order to do that, we are going to, okay, in order to find a matrix that will do that, because again, in order to check that I did this right, I multiplied this by these two vectors, kind of like I multiplied this by this matrix to get this, okay? You could also think about, again, our equation ax equals b, Okay, as these being the columns of A, this being the B that we would like to get out, and these being our, we're solving, these are our X, our coefficients that we would have put in here for X to multiply by the columns. Okay, so in order to make another A, okay, a matrix A that will go, we're going to say from C to D, we'll do it alphabetically, okay? So to find a matrix... that will take coordinates from C to D. Okay, and we actually call that matrix P, and then we draw a little C, and we do it that way. I don't know, you know, I'm not really sure why we do it backwards that way, but that is it. Okay, in order to find that matrix, what we're going to do is we're actually going to transform the basis vectors of C uh, into vectors with respect to D. So what I'm trying to find, okay, let's say this is C1 and this is C2 and this is D1 and this is D2, okay, to find, I need to find the vector C1 with respect to the basis D, which means I need to find, okay, the coefficients, okay, so what is that equal to? That will be the coefficients of 4, 5, and 1, 0, that equal, that can give me the vector 3, 2. Okay, and maybe you can see right away that this is exactly like AX equals B, where if I make this column and this column the coefficient matrix A, and this B, I could rub reduce and find these. So just for my notes though, this is going to be 2 fifths, and this is going to be 7 fifths, okay? So I need to do the same thing, okay? Because whatever transformation works for this vector is going to work for all the other vectors from C to D. But I need a second column. I need to find out, well, what if I transform C2 to be with respect to D, okay? So again, finding coefficients for 4, 5, and for 1, 0. That will give me the second vector here, which is... 0, 1, okay, and you could either row reduce it, I forgot my blank, okay, or math it out, okay, so I've got 1 fifth here and 
negative four fifths. That one's probably a little bit easier for you to figure out because I need to get zero one. Okay, so C C one the vector C one in the basis D will be the vector two fifths seven fifths. The vector C two with respect to basis D is one fifth negative four fifths, and so the matrix okay that transforms vectors in C to vectors in D will actually just be these two these two vectors as columns. So two fifths, seven fifths, one fifth, and negative four fifths. Okay, because if it transforms the basis vectors, it will transform all of the other vectors. Because all of the other vectors in the in the system can be written as linear combinations of the vectors C in C. Okay? Alright. So again, if you want to see, if I want to kind of spell it out in words, what we're saying is the columns of the, you can say transformation or change of coordinates, change of coordinates matrix um, are the coefficients from the equations that represent the basis vectors. And here I said that this matrix was from B to C. These are just represent two different bases. Okay, so that represent the basis vectors of B as linear combinations of the basis vectors of C. Okay, again, using those uh, coefficients of these basis vectors to form, excuse me, using the coefficient vec coefficients of the new basis vectors. Wait, hold on. Now I'm having a brain fart. Okay. I'm trying to find a linear combination of the new basis vectors to represent the old basis vector. Right. So I'm using the coefficients as the coordinates, as the kind of columns in this transformation matrix. Okay. So multiplication, a vector multiplied by the matrix from B to C will convert coordinates in the B in the basis B system to the basis C system. So we're going to check actually what we just did down here at the bottom. Okay. So the ma the matrix P from C to D should change the coordinate X with respect to C into the coordinate X with respect to D. Okay, so X with respect to D should be equal to 2 fifths, 7 fifths, 1 fifth, negative 4 fifths times X with respect to C, which we found was 2, 2, 1 earlier. So let's try that out. Okay. So that is going to give me a two by one, but it's going to give me four fifths plus one fifth, and then 14 fifths minus four fifths. So I've got five fifths, which is one, and then I've got 10 fifths, which is two. So did it change this vector into this vector? Yes, it did. Ta -da. Okay. All right, and so this diagram over here, if you want to just annotate it a little bit, okay, this was our standard, and this is how I kind of started the video. Before we were going kind of between the standard basis and one and one basis, standard basis and one basis, okay? But now we'd like to do this part down here, so basis C. We like to go just strictly between the two bases. Okay, so let's see a little bit more examples. Okay, all right, and if you printed out the filled notes, okay, I want to make sure that you corrected 
there is supposed to be a negative right here. Okay, just to make our math a little easier. So we've got two bases here for vector space, and here, what they've written, okay, is that the b1, okay, the basis vector 1 for b, is a linear combination of the vectors in basis c. Okay, so that means, okay, what they've told us already is that the basis vector of b1 with respect to basis c, written in terms of basis c, is the vector negative 1, 4. I got that because I looked at the coefficients here. And b2, okay, when transformed to be in basis c, is the vector 5, negative 3. Again, looking at the coefficients of the basis vectors for c that make up this vector. That is the coordinate. Okay. So, first question. Find the change of coordinates matrix from b to c. Well, hot take. They already gave us that information. Okay, so in part A, okay, exactly what we did over here was we needed to transform the vectors from the basis we started in to the basis we were going to. So if we are trying to go from B to C, we need to transform the basis vectors of B to be in terms of the basis vectors C, which is what they already gave us. So we didn't actually have to do any work here. We just had to recognize that this matrix is made up of either these coefficients, if you want to think about it this way, or uh, the coordinate that represents basis vector B, or B1 in terms of basis C. So this matrix is negative 1, 4, 5, negative 3. Okay, because if it transforms the basis vectors, it will transform all of the other coordinates in basis in base D to be in base C. Okay, second question. Okay, find x sub C if I know that I can represent the x vector in this way in terms of basis B. So what this is saying is x described in terms of basis B are these the coordinates 5, 3. And now I can use what I did in part A to take me from B to C. So my vector x in terms of basis C, instead of having to go back to the original, um, because I, I couldn't even in this example, I can't even figure out what the original coordinates for x are because I've not been given a specific vector for b1 or b2. So I don't even know what the coordinates are for x. So I can't go back to the standard basis. I need to go directly to my answer, go directly to basis C. So here, this will be the matrix P from B to C, negative 1, 4, 5, negative 3, multiplied by the vector x with respect to basis B. All right, so I am getting negative 5 plus 15 and 20 minus 9. So I am getting 10, 11. That is the vector x in basis C. All right, that's good. A couple of other things that we need to know about are, okay, like I said earlier, the columns of this matrix are going to be linearly independent, okay, because they are made up of, uh, right, so they're, they're, excuse me, they're coordinate vectors of a linearly independent set, okay? So just like, remember in, I think, 4 point, was it 4.4? Let me look real quick. Right, so just like in 4.4, where we were using the coordinate vectors of the polynomials to determine whether or not the polynomials were independent or dependent, here, since the columns of this matrix are the coordinate vectors of a linearly independent set, they will also be linearly independent. I know that this set is linearly independent because it's a basis. That's part of the definition of being a basis. Okay, And since also uh, we are trying to span a whole dimension, that's going to make our matrix square. Therefore, okay, linearly independent, square matrix must be invertible by the invertible matrix theorem. Again, it's important that it's square because not all linearly independent vectors, not, not all matrices whose columns are linearly independent are going to be invertible. Okay, Think about a uh, 3 by 2 matrix that has two linearly independent columns. It's still not invertible because it's not square. Okay, 
we could find a left inverse and find a right inverse, something when I multiply something by it, it will give me i, but it's not going to work on both sides. But because of this, that makes it nice. Since we can invert this matrix, that will be the matrix that goes the other way, converting <coughs> excuse me, from C to B. Okay, so what we already learned, and this is a quick recap of last time, is that if we need to change to the standard basis from B to E, we always use E for the standard basis. Maybe this is an impact of Euler. Somebody look that up. I should look that up. Anyway, this is going to be the same as the coordinates matrix that we did in 4.4. Okay, so that's not super new. Now, how do I want, I want a more efficient way, because what if we weren't doing this in two by two? What if we were doing this in more dimensions? A more efficient way to find the matrix from B to C. Okay, so I give you a hint here. Okay, in order to find that matrix that transforms from one basis to another basis, line up all the basis vectors in a matrix. The basis you are going to on the left and the basis you are coming from on the right. And actually this doesn't say it here, but this is an augmented matrix. Why does this work? So I want to take a second and explain that. So remember what we were trying to do, okay, so when we were trying to find from B to C, what we were trying to do is we were trying to say, okay, what are the coefficients of vectors of the basis we're going to? Okay, so C1 and C2. What are the coefficients I need to multiply these two things by to get B1? Well, if I put these two things in a matrix and I multiply them by my answer that I'm looking for, that will give me B1. And the same thing for B2. If I put the basis vectors in a matrix, I'm looking for what I should multiply them by to get B2. Okay? This is the same format as AX equals B. Okay? These, this is made of the um, basis, no, let me write that better. Made of the vectors in the basis I'm going to okay I'm looking for the coefficients which go here now and this is going to be my old basis vector okay and we would just do this twice Okay, so you could just row reduce AX equals B, where these are, these are the new basis vectors and B is the old one of the old basis vectors. Why do it twice? Why not just be efficient? Okay, row reduce at the same time. Okay, so make a really big augment, augmented part of the matrix. Make it with the two basis vectors I wanted them to be equal to. Okay. So let's test that out. Let's see if that makes it easier. All right, so refocus here. Okay, I know this light is like, it's been there like the whole time, sorry. All right, so we've got two bases and here I have given in both examples, I've given you some and I think we're just gonna do B or we're gonna do example two. I'll leave example three because it's the same, okay? Um, we want to find the change of coordinates matrix from B to C and then in reverse from C to B. It actually doesn't matter. You could do it in either order. Your answer to whatever one you get first, the inverse of that will be the other one. So you don't have to do this process twice. Okay, so I'm going to go from B to C. So if I'm going, and this is the tricky part, I'm making an augmented matrix, okay, since I'm going from B to C. I want to put the, the vectors I want to go to first and the vectors I wanted to come from second. Actually, maybe this is why we said <laughs> that this is going to end up being a matrix from B to C. That makes a little more sense. It's coming back to me. Okay, and then you row reduce, okay? 
dun, 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 modern technology calculator. Okay, since this is going to be some kind of, uh, it's a two by two of two linearly independent columns, I know that's going to be invertible, which means that this should be the identity matrix when I row reduce. Okay, and the right side will be three, negative four, negative two, three. So, some notation. This augmented matrix is not equal to P from B to C. Some of you on the test were telling me when I, you were solving like L alpha equals B, you were telling me that LB equals alpha. No, okay? Don't write that notation. I don't know which one of you put it in like a discord or where you found it, but stop that. Okay, use better notation than that. Okay, so I row reduce, then I make a separate statement that says the matrix P from B to C is three, negative four, negative two, three. Okay, so that is the matrix. I would multiply vectors uh, in, if I had a vector in terms of like the basis B, I could multiply it by this matrix and it would take it to X in terms of C. What if I wanna go the other way? Well, I should be able to find the inverse of this matrix. So the matrix P that will take me from C to B will be the inverse of the matrix that takes me from B to C. Okay, since this is two by two, this is easy to find the inverse. I gotta find the determinant first. So I've got nine minus eight, so it's one, huzzah. So one over the determinant times, switch them, and then make them negative, or multiply by a negative, excuse me. Okay, so it doesn't look too different. So my inverse, which is my matrix from C to B, is going to be three, four, two, three. Okay. And you know that they're gonna be inverses also because let's think about this. If I transformed something, let's say X in terms of B to be X in terms of C, and then I multiplied it back, you should end up with the same thing. These two should undo each other's operations. So if I multiplied them together, okay, so let's say I multiplied, if I went, well, let's do this in the right order. Okay, if I multiplied B, to C, a vector in terms of X with respect to B. I went from B to C, but then went back to C to B. I should end up exactly where I started, which means that multiplying these two things together should be like multiplying by the identity. Okay, so I'm gonna leave three for you to do on your own. Okay, same question though. Find the matrix from B to C and then find from C to B. Okay, because we've got one more example I wanna talk about that is kind of important. Okay. So I wanna work with polynomials. So I wanna find the change of coordinate matrix from this basis to the standard basis, and then okay, writing a polynomial as a linear combination of these polynomials here. Okay, One other way to view the change of coordinates would be this kind of progression here. Um, I actually like to write this a little bit differently. Okay, So if you want to take a look at kind of what this means, I recommend breaking it down using the field notes. But another way would be, remember that x, if I multiply, now this is with the standard basis, okay? Using the standard basis in between, which is not really what we wanna do because we want to be as efficient as possible. But if I have coordinates in terms of basis b and I multiply, by them, I multiply them by the transformation matrix from b to the standard basis, I get x in terms of the standard basis. Same thing happens Okay, using a different basis. I have coordinates x in terms of basis c. I multiply them by the transformation matrix from c to basis standard basis e. Okay, I get x. All right, so if I combine these two things, okay, and one, I wanna make one manipulation here. Since this matrix is made up of, excuse me, this matrix is made up of linearly independent columns that span the entire dimension, whatever dimension this is, this is going to be an invertible matrix. It's linearly independent and it's going to be square. So I can change this to say P sub C inverse times X will equal X in terms of C. Okay, now I'm gonna take this and uh, insert it here. So that's gonna tell me that P C inverse times P B 
times x b should be equal to x in terms of c. Okay? But, okay, another way to think about all of this, I want to think about the other side now. I know that from the definition, okay, one other given was that p from b to c times x b is equal to the x in terms of c, okay? Change of coordinates matrix from, directly from b to c. So I'm going to set that in on the right side. Okay, so P, C, inverse, P, B, X. Oh, I guess I'll keep my parentheses. In terms of B equals the transformation matrix from B to basis C times X sub B. Okay, matching up both sides of this equation, what this means is P, C, inverse times P, B is going to be equal to the transformation matrix from B to C. Okay, so an, um, another way to find um, this matrix here. Okay, all right, sorry, that was a bit of a sidebar here to kind of explain what all of this meant. I think it looks a little bit better if we think about just substituting things in, um, in, in an equation, kind of to do a little mini proof. And this is where, that's what our goal kind of was. But example four was really about finding the change of coordinates matrix from this basis to the standard basis. So we are going to use three basis vectors, B1, B2, B3, okay? And it told us it's a basis, so I know that they're gonna be linearly independent. Um, and since we're going to the standard basis, I actually just have to use the coordinate vectors for this as my transformation, okay? So the transformation matrix from the basis B to the standard basis, or if you want to write it, just the transformation matrix from the basis B, okay? I'm gonna use the coefficients, which are one, zero, three. Again, remember, these are polynomials of at most degree two, so I have to have one entry for each possible element. Okay, the next one will be two, one, negative five, from the coefficients there, and then one, two, zero. Okay, so that will be my transformation matrix. Okay, so what if I want to write, okay, so what did it ask me? It said write T squared as a linear combination of the polynomials in the basis B. So in the standard basis, so in E, T squared can be represented as the vector 0, 0, 1. Okay, so that's, this would be X with respect to the standard basis. Okay, well, what if I want, I want X with respect to basis B? That's what it's asking me for. So that means I'm gonna use, what would I need to multiply PB by? So that it would be equal to the vector in the standard basis. Well, that looks like AX equals B to me. So I'm gonna use an augmented matrix, one, zero, three, two, one, negative five, one, two, zero, and I want it to be equal to 0, 0, 1. Okay, when I row reduce, I am getting the identity matrix on the right. Oops, that's not the identity matrix. Okay, and this also goes with the fact that uh, something we covered in 4.4 was the uniqueness of re these representation of coordinates. This will be 3, negative 2, 1. Okay, I am sure that you are smart enough to do that uh, just by looking at the vectors from the beginning. Um, but just in case you've got something more complicated, you can also use your vectors. So the coordinates of the vector x with respect to b are 3, negative 2, 1. Okay, so if we write t squared as a linear combination of the polynomials of b, so we can check by saying 3 times b1 minus 2 times b2 plus 1 times b3. Does that equal t squared? Okay, and I will leave that up to you to check. You can just, instead of b1, b2, b3, go up here and use the polynomials I labeled b1, b2, b3. So a little bit of a recap here. Okay, in this lesson, what we did is we reviewed 4.4. We talked about how a basis basically 
gives us building blocks or kind of commands for movement okay, that allow us to represent uh, the standard coordinate system using different building blocks. Okay, mapping the same location as two different coordinates, depending on kind of what units we're, we're using. Okay, you can also think about it, another metaphor. Okay, you could say something is the same, uh, an elephant weighs the same in <laughs> all the time, but it has a different measurement in kilograms versus pounds. Okay, so we reviewed what a, what a basis was. Then we said, okay, what if I wanna go directly from one basis to another? And we worked on creating a change of coordinates matrix in between two bases, skipping over the standard basis. Okay, and we again, we're still using the coefficients, we're still really hitting upon linear combinations to make these matrices. Okay, and we also then in the end found a much simpler way. I lost my paper. Hold on. Okay. We found a much simpler way to find this change of coordinates matrix, okay, to do a change of basis um, by using, again, our handy dandy tool AX equals B. I know this was complicated, so if you have questions, please come to office hours or send me a message separately. I'm happy to go over this again.